Kathy. Um, thank you for this meeting is being recorded. Thank you for um, attending tonight's meeting. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide general information to you all, our community users, from the three entities that you see right now on the screen: Neighborhood and Community Services (NCS), Fairfax County Public Schools (FCPS), and Fairfax County Park Authority (FCPA). Um, our goal is to provide you with some general information. We will not get into um, a lot of specifics uh, to your particular needs or issues maybe, but we hope to provide you with some general information that you'll be able to take back with you. Um, in order to uh, be considerate and respectful to everyone attending and presenting today, all attendees are muted. We'll have designated time to address questions at the end of all three presentations but there is a place where you can submit questions at any time during the session. To submit a question to our panelists, please enter your question in the Q&A text box. The slides and recordings will be posted on our website after the meeting, and a link will be sent to all participants via the email. And if we're not able to answer all your questions, which I'm guessing we probably won't get to everybody, we'll make sure that we address them via email, phone calls, or you can reach out specifically to whatever entity you do have a question. Uh, before we get started with our presentations, I want to introduce um, Lloyd Tucker, the Director of Neighborhood and Community Services, and Palace Washington, our Deputy Director of um, Neighborhood and Community Services. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Our, our spring uh, user groups, uh, welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to, uh, to have you all on this evening and to go through uh, the overview of, uh, of um, of information that will help you have a, a successful spring season uh, when it comes to our, our sports uh, this this upcoming season. Um, it uh, I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to uh, Julian, Mark, and Jason, and our colleagues from uh, Park Authority and from FCPS uh, for the work that they put into uh, tonight's presentation, um, as well as Lori, Andrew, Victor, and and the rest of our. Uh, crew over at, at NCS Athletics and, and Community Youth. So uh, thank you all so much for the, the time that you put into this and for uh, taking us on a great journey with our uh, users um, to acclimate and orient uh, them to the uh, spring expectations. Um, again, I wish you all a, a successful season and uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, throughout. Palace. Good evening and welcome everyone. Palace Washington, Deputy Director, Neighborhood and Community Services. Um, I, I definitely know that I'm between you getting your questions answered and having a very robust conversation um, to get your spring started for um, the upcoming season. So just want to say um, welcome. We are here to help and support. Uh, there, You have an excellent team um, with Mark and Jason, and um, the partnership is, is really um, rock solid. So we look forward to um, you guys having a great season. Please reach out if you have any questions, and um, thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, Palace. Um, a couple of things before we get uh, started on our presentation. We're going to have three separate presentations tonight. The first one will be from Neighborhood and Community Services, followed by slides from Fairfax County Public Schools, and then um, we'll end up with Fairfax County Park Authority, FCPA. Um, just know that this slideshow, this presentation, the, the whole meeting itself will be online, so you'll be able to get it. So don't worry about having to try to take notes, remember everything. Um, It'll all be up there for you. Again, our purpose tonight is to try to give you as much information as we can. General information, we know we probably will miss a few things here or there, but we just tried to put together things that we thought were important to you as community users. Um, if you have any individual questions about maybe a search circumstance that you have, whether it's with park authority, maybe it's maintenance or school system or with NCS, just please make sure you reach out to us separately from this meeting and we can try to address your individual concern. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna introduce our staff just so you know who they are. I'm Mark Martino, I'm the operations manager. Uh, Karen Aversato is our director. Um, we have Aaron Marotti, who's our uh, administrative assistant, Jason Shelton, our analyst, Nancy Bush, who's in finance, 
Uh, our schedulers, as probably most of you are aware, are Victor Morales in Region 1, Travis Middleton in Region 2, Lori Barb Region 3, and Andrew Buffington in Region 4. And with that, we'll get started. First of all, the roles of NCS. Um, NCS is the scheduler for all nonprofit community use on all Fairfax County Public Schools and Fairfax County Park Authority facilities. That is what our main job here is at NCS. We are also the point of contact for user groups regarding issues that you may have dealing with FCPS or an FCPA, SCPA facilities. Our, our, the way we schedule is by the field allocation policy and the gem allocation policy. Those links are right here and will be also on the PowerPoint that you'll be able to go to when you go to our website and be able to pull it down in case you have any questions about how scheduling may occur. Again, anytime you have specific questions about scheduling, please reach out to your scheduler. You can see that we schedule by our regions and you can see that the information for your scheduler uh, for your particular region is on the map that's provided, provided for you right here, region one, two, three, and four. One of the issues that we know we, we have are, is a consistency with some walk-on use. Just to understand that walk-on groups are permitted to use fields if there are less than 20 people and there is no permitted user group on that field. If when you're there with a permitted and you have a walk-on issue, we ask that you call the, the uh, online number. Our, we have on-call people working throughout the time that we permit fields. Please call that number. We also have monitors that are scheduled each night during um, community use, um, but they can't be everywhere. Unfortunately, they will only have so many, so they can't be at all sites all time. We do also hire school security and police when they're available. I uh, know the police have gone to different shifts, so it's more difficult to get overtime usage for them, but we do try to schedule them at particular uh, where we have hotspots around the county, and there is the police non-emergency number. Also, if you know that you're having a walk-on issue, we ask that you reach out to your schedule maybe the next day and say, hey, you know, we're having an issue with walk-ons, and then we would be able to kind of get a monitor over there on that particular time to be able to see what the situation is. I'm gonna turn it over to Victor Morales, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit about weather and field closures and lights. Victor. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Victor Morales, the Region 1 Scheduler for NCS, and I'll be going over the uh, field closures and field lights. So there's, there's no weather hotline for the school fields, but field use is prohibited during wet or inclement weather. Groups can be held liable for any damage from playing on the fields during wet or inclement weather. There is a weather hotline for the uh, park fields, which is on this slide here, and it can also be found on the Park Authority website. The phone line is updated uh, Monday through Friday by 3 p.m. The phone line isn't updated on weekends or county holidays. And now uh, onto the lights. So uh, at NCS, we scheduled the lights for only for NCS usage on school fields. The Park Authority schedules the lights on all park fields. And the lights are managed using the Musco system. And the lights are scheduled before the start of every season based on the schedule on any scheduled NCS uh, use and updated as use is added or adjusted. And uh, if you are scheduled for field use and are having any issues with the lights, please call the after hours number provided on this slide and page two of your permit. The on-call monitor can turn the lights on for you remotely and they can also find out through Musco if it's a mechanical error or and not a scheduling error. If you experience any issues with the lights, please report it to the after hours number here and on page two of your permit. And uh, so we can address the issue quickly and early as possible. Uh, Lori, we're gonna turn it over to you to talk about unused field and gem space. Sorry about that. That's okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Lori Barb. I'm the Region 3 scheduler, which is Tyson's, Vienna, Reston, South Lakes. Uh, and I just want to talk really quickly to you about field space and, um, and gym space. Um, one of the most important things is just communicating with us schedulers uh, if you're not going to use your space, because it's, a, it's just a courtesy to the custodial um, crews at schools not to be waiting by doors if you're not going to show up. 
um, we can let them know that you're not going to be there. Uh, so during the week, if you can give us 24 hours notice, if you're not going to use the facility the, for a certain week, you're going to be out of town or whatever, it, it would be a huge help. And then on weekends, um, typically we do 72 hours, which is close of business on Wednesday to let us know if you're not going to use the facilities on a weekend. And um, that's kind of important because <clears throat> if you have time scheduled on a weekend, uh, then you're paying for custodial fees, regardless of whether you show up or not. The custodians report for duty and are paid. So if you're not going to be there and you have scheduled on a weekend and you're not going to be there, let us know by Wednesday, close of business, so that we can notify the schools to let them know that they don't need to have custodians present um, at the site that you're canceling. And, um, and the other thing that it does, uh, canceling space, is gives us an opportunity if someone else is looking for some gym space on a weekend uh, and we're just super tight and don't have anything that we can schedule another group there. And so it helps not have our facility sitting empty um, and it gives groups other places to be able to use space um, if you know those cases arise and they do frequently with closures in certain places. Uh, if you have any questions about any of that, um, you can go click on the link down here to community use uh, school facilities and the regulation 8420 to give you more information relating to closures um, and turning back facilities. And then the other thing I'm going to talk about just very quickly is uh, tournament scheduling. Um, annually, we have a huge number of field tournaments that are requested, but that doesn't mean that we can always uh, fill all those tournaments because regular season usage takes precedence over tournament scheduling. So all historical normal spring users get their space scheduled first. And then we take all the tournament applications for spring, summer, winter, and fall. And we send out emails asking groups to release space for tournaments. So sometimes that works and sometimes groups can't release because they've got too many things going on. Um, so, the most important thing about running tournaments and getting them scheduled is to be timely in your responses to the emails you receive from us about asking releases. Um, if you can't release, understand that. Um, that's just how it is. Sometimes you've got too many things scheduled, but it's super important to just at least respond to us and let us know either you can release space or you can't. And then we do our best to schedule tournaments, try to find other locations to help people get tournament space and, and schedule as many requests as we can when possible. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lori. I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Nancy Bush, who's gonna talk uh, a little bit about uh, the NCS scholarship program. Nancy, you're muted. Of course I am. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Bush, and I'm the administrator of the NCS Athletic Services Scholarship Program. Uh, detail, detailed information about the NCS Athletic Services Scholarship Program can be found on the NCS Athletic Services website. A link for the scholarship program information can be found by clicking on the dollar sign shown under Athletic Services Program and Services. Um, the in, information on the website is divided into two parts. The first section is for the individual who is interested in applying uh, through their league for a scholarship. Um, the application can be found here. Uh, the application itself includes a description of the NCS scholarship program, eligibility information, and instructions on applying. Uh, the individual applicants do not send their applications to NCS. They uh, should submit their completed applications and eligibility documentation to their sports league scholarship administrator. The league administrator is responsible for collecting all application and eligibility documentation and preparing a submission package that is sent to NCS Athletic Services. Each season, league administrators will be submitting one spreadsheet that contains all of the information for all of the applicants and one eligibility verification form that has been signed by the administrator indicating that they have re received, reviewed, and verified eligibility documentation for all applicants. Uh, guidelines for the league administrators can be found as the second part of the NCS scholarship website. Uh, these guidelines include detailed instructions for putting together the scholarship submission package. The deadlines for submission for each of the three scholarship seasons uh, are shown on the slide and they're also listed on the website. Uh, a few final things to note, um, there's a scholarship award limit of $150 per applicant per season and a $300 limit per applicant per year. 
Uh, these are the maximum amounts that can be awarded. Uh, the actual amounts of the scholarships awarded depends on the number of participants that apply for that season. Generally, scholarship amounts can range from $30 to $60 per eligible participant per season. Um, if you have any questions about the NCS scholarship program, please feel free to give me a call anytime or send me an email. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, the, the next slide talks about our Fairfax Athletic Council, which is a advisory board um, for you all community users. Um, and it links with the County Board of Supervisors, the school board and county agencies on matters relating to Fairfax County. Uh, it's surprised to us that 23 voting members we meet monthly, <clears throat> excuse me, meets monthly, establishes priority and tries to enhance the availability of sports programs to the citizens of Fairfax County. You can see there's a link to the website. Um, I would encourage everyone to kind of take a look at it, see who your uh, athletic council members are. If you have any interest in the council to reach out because um, it really is a great advisory board that kind of brings problems to the forefront tries to solve issues, tries to help, try to make the sports um, in Fairfax County the best that they can be. And, and lastly, from NCS, I uh, want to give a special um, kind of a shout out here to the Stephen A. McLaughlin Champions of Character Award ceremony, which will be October the 17th um, this year, 2022, 2023 in person. Last year's, as you know, was uh, online. Uh, this year's will be actually at the Government Center. Uh, we're excited to have this back in person again. It honors both our male and female athletes, coaches, parents from all nine magisterial districts. Um, it's not just about the best athlete. It's ones that have uh, provided extraordinary efforts and show good character traits such as respect, responsibility, caring, trustworthiness, citizenship, and fairness. Online submissions are open now. You can print it. You can do it online. Um, I would encourage all of you, we know that you all have extraordinary athletes, coaches, volunteers, parents, pe maybe people that just paint fields all the time. But the most important thing is, is to get those nominations in because we do have a nomination review board that goes through all of them. And then we will obviously let those know that have won and be able to present them at a really a tremendous ceremony um, on October the 17th. So please, please, please. Um, go back to your coaches, go back to your groups and, 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 and help us get those uh, nominations in. Well, thank you for listening to our, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Andrew, I'm, I, you're, you're, the, you're the last one. I apologize. No problem at all. Um, sorry, my computer is being a little slow. Um, my name is Andrew Buffington. I'm the Region 4 Scheduler. Um, I'm going to talk about the Colmore Soccer Camp. Uh, the Colmore Soccer Camp is a free camp uh, that's sponsored by our department uh, that is typically held at Bailey's Elementary. Sometimes we have it at Justice High School. It runs eight weeks over the summer season, and this year's dates will be June 19th through August 11th. Uh, it's Monday through Friday, 1 to 4 p.m. The camp is completely free. Uh, we do not provide any transportation or anything to the camp, but it is open to everyone. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is um, turn the uh, uh, over to Vicki Garner, John Chapman uh, from uh, Fairfax County Public Schools, um, our partners uh, in community use. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Around. Um, this is Vicki Garner, Coordinator of Community Use. I'm joined by two other FCPSers, which is John Chapman, which will be presenting to you tonight, and Cindy hall Ritari, which is the link between our office and NCS. Turn it over to you, John. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. And we're just going to get right into it, uh, talking about what is community use. Uh, community use manages all usage after the school bell for internal and field usage. Our school board encourages the use of school buildings and grounds by the community for educational, recreational, civic, and cultural activities to the extent possible under the law. Uh, and in order to ensure that school facilities are available for school programs and that they are there also to serve the community needs, uh, we've set some priorities for use uh, and we're gonna talk about those. Uh, the first priority is gonna be FCPS programs and activities. 
uh, the second priority uh, is going to be FCPS support organizations, uh, such as our PTOs or our booster clubs. Uh, the third priority level uh, is going to be Fairfax County government agencies, such as our friends at NCS and Park Authority and also uh, the SAC programs. Uh, and then fourth is going to be kind of the general community users or organizations in the area. Next slide, thank you. Um, uh, we do try to have a certain kind of communication flow with each of those priority areas. Um, and so Fairfax County Schools, uh, they those schools, those sites work directly with our office at Community Use. Uh, the second priority level, our support organizations uh, work with their host school uh, and then in turn work directly with uh, Community Use. Uh, for priority three, the Fairfax County government agencies, uh, such as NCS or Park Authority, uh, I want to start um, going kind of with this part with uh, going right to left with our users. Uh, they talk directly to uh, their contacts at Fairfax County government, uh, whether it be NCS or Park Authority, uh, and then in turn, those agencies talk directly with the community use office. Uh, and then after that, uh, the community use office will communicate with our FCPS schools. Um, please note that there is no kind of line of communication uh, directly from the users uh, to the schools as we try to prefer um, that uh, your users or the users that you represent contact uh, the Fairfax County uh, contact that they have. And then fourth, uh, with our general community user, uh, they also work with our office. Next slide. Uh, as you can see, uh, and as you already know, uh, Fairfax Community Use uh, has layers of responsibility and connects with all corners of Fairfax County, and we hold a lot uh, of events uh, yearly. Uh, as you can see, here's a, a little rough uh, list of some of the types of events that we hold, uh, and we'll move to the next slide. Uh, here on this slide, we talk a little bit about uh, the hours of community use for our gyms uh, and our fields, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, at the close of the school day, uh, we open up uh, the facilities for uh, the use, uh, and that will end roughly around 10.15 every day, uh, Monday through Friday in our gyms, uh, with the exception of Saturdays and Sundays, where we'll go from 8 a.m. to about 10 p.m. Our fields uh, usually open up after school is over uh, and close, uh, depending on the, the type of field and the lighting situation, either at sundown or 11 p.m. Uh, then on Sundays and Saturdays on our weekends, uh, we open up all day, so 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. if you have lights on the field. Uh, if you don't have lights on the field, uh, we want you to be uh, we want you to be mindful that there are no generators or other powered light sources uh, allowed on our fields or grounds. Next slide. Uh, as you're aware, uh, we have so certain holidays or other designated no use dates, and here are uh, a list of those. Um, even when uh, we have those dates, uh, many times the fields can be used, uh, even when facilities are closed. Um, but please keep that in mind. If you do use those fields, uh, the facilities, uh, there is no building access. Um, and this list is not exhaustive. Um, FCPS uh, continues to work through their calendar, and so there could be additional holiday dates or no-use dates uh, added as needed. Next slide. Uh, perfect. So uh, I want to walk through uh, some of our guidelines and our process. Um, we ask that users obtain a valid permit or schedule from FCPS or their government agency and show that permit to FCPS staff when you arrive for usage. Only use the specific space identified on the scheduled permit uh, and then arrive at the scheduled permit time and leave at that scheduled permit time. Uh, for your youth events, uh, we say that an event adult, an adult who's uh, associated with your event, uh, must be present. Must excuse me, must be present and monitor your event at all times. Uh, we ask that spectators remain in the permitted area uh, and not kind of linger in the hallways or, or roam around the building. Uh, youth are not al allowed to be left unsupervised in our hallways and restrooms. Uh, we do expect uh, for people to be respectful and polite uh, to FCPS staff. Um, remembering that you are a guest of that building uh, and frankly being respectful and polite to other users as well. Uh, we ask that you do not do, do damage, remove, or alter any wall information, any decorations, or signage. Uh, please do not erase whiteboards or chalkboards, nor leave any writing on the board that is placed there by your user group. 
do not use FCPS uh, supplies, meaning sports equipment or materials, uh, as well as um, do not move mats, uh, tables and chairs in gyms or classrooms. And then lastly, uh, we've seen a number of incidents with this. Uh, please do not use any tape on the gym flooring. Um, it's surprising how many variations of tape damage the seal and paint on the floor. Next slide. Uh, we ask that you not bring any food or drinks into the areas of the gym or other spaces unless permission has been granted by FCPS. Of course, water uh, is allowed for uh, in the gym during sports. Um, many times the doors uh, of a facility will not be open prior to your scheduled start time. Uh, so for example, if your permit states that your start time is at eight, uh, entry should not be before 8 p.m. Um, do not prop open any doors. Uh, we find that this is a safety violation uh, and we want to make sure that we cut down on uh, these incidents. Uh, if your gym is occupied or your space is occupied um, and you are and it's not available at your permitted time, uh, feel free to uh, respectfully alert the user that you have a permit for usage. Uh, if they have not uh, vacated that space in a timely manner after five or ten minutes, uh, please call NCS helpline uh, for assistance. Uh, if the door, if you find that the door of the facility is not open at the time of your event, uh, after waiting uh, a couple of minutes, uh, please call the NCS hotline for assistance. Uh, if you have a medical emergency or even a police emergency, please dial 911. Uh, when you arrive, if you observe uh, any type of damage or have a concern about uh, FCPS usage, please report that to NCS or any FCPS staff on site. Uh, NCS will be able to report all damage uh, to FCPS community use. Uh, we do ask that all, all users uh, are required to leave the space that they use in the same condition that the space was prior to their usage, especially uh, as when it comes to garbage, please place all of that garbage in trash recycles, uh, receptacles, excuse me. Um, similar to our gyms, uh, how to use FCPS fields, uh, make sure you have a permit uh, a lot, arrive on time and leave on time. Uh, only use the space identified. Uh, for any youth events, please make sure an adult is present and monitoring those participants. Uh, please do not you, uh, leave youth unsupervised on the fields or in the restrooms. Uh, please be respectful and polite uh, to staff and other uh, guests of the facility. Uh, and of course, do not damage, remove, or alter any field information, decorations, or signage. Next slide, there we go. Do not use uh, FCPS uh, equipment or supplies unless uh, already received uh, permission. Uh, fields will not, be, if they're not available uh, at your start time, uh, please uh, check with NCS. Uh, if somebody is occupying uh, that field, again, check with NCS. If you have a medical emergency, please dial 911. Uh, and if you observe any damage, uh, please let FCPS know uh, as soon as possible. Uh, that way, NCS can follow report with community use uh, and seek assistance. And, and similar to our fields, I uh, don't want to run past this, but please leave the space that you use in the same condition uh, as you found it. Next slide. Um, if you need to cancel uh, your use, uh, and you have scheduled usage at a facility and no longer need that space, uh, please do the following. Contact NCS to release the scheduled space to another uh, NCS user. Uh, NCS will contact FCPS and let us know. Um, if you need to contact NCS to release part of your scheduled space uh, to another user, please contact NCS and let us, uh, they will also let us know. Uh, as, you, as you very well know, any unused space is a missed opportunity for another community user, especially because uh, coming back from the pandemic space is very limited because we have a high volume of usage. Next slide. Uh, in the event that FCPS needs to cancel a user's schedule, uh, there will be times due to our programming and events uh, that a user's, uh, user group's permitted schedule uh, will have to be canceled. Uh, and we have some examples here due to emergency repairs, weather or safety concerns, uh, rescheduled FCPS support organization events, uh, or unexpected FCPS or support organization events. Um, FCPS does try to make every effort to support community users and their groups and their usage, 
and certainly understands the impact on community users and their participants uh, when cancellations occur. Next slide. Uh, if you find that something is uh, broken or damaged, please let NCS know uh, and they will alert FCPS so that we can put in uh, the proper uh, protocols to get things fixed. Uh, we certainly understand that our facilities uh, have heavy usage and things can wear out. Uh, if possible, uh, and you uh, see an on-site custodian or staff member, please let them know as well. Uh, that way they can also communicate within the building uh, to get things fixed. Uh, if your participants happen to break something or cause damage, uh, please let NCS know as soon as possible. That way they can relay that message uh, to our office. Uh, we do try to keep in mind that students and staff arriving for the next day want to have the same environment that they had uh, that day when they left class. Next. Uh, here are a couple of pictures of uh, actual damage that we've seen uh, in our facilities uh, going left to right. Uh, first, we have uh, folks that have brought in drinks uh, that are not water uh, into the gym and spilled them and not cleaned them up. Uh, plus, we uh, you can't tell from this picture, but uh, the mats have been moved around uh, within the gym. Uh, the second picture is going to be some nets that have been cut uh, and damaged. Uh, the third picture is going to be a torn bulletin board. Uh, and the fourth picture is going to be uh, baseboards that have been ripped away from uh, the wall. Uh, all, each each of these examples uh, is avoidable uh, simply by monitoring participants, uh, particularly those participants that are not kind of active in the sport at the time. Uh, if everybody does their part, uh, community usage uh, for facilities should be very seamless. Uh, we do like to go over kind of prohibited activities. Um, many of you are very well aware of um, tobacco products, uh, weapons, alcoholic beverages, any illegal drugs are not prohibited excuse me, are prohibited on FCPS, uh, not only within our buildings, but on our grounds. Uh, we also like to mention there's no running in hallways, uh, whether that's um, unauthorized or uh, sports conditioning, uh, no skating in our hallways as well. Uh, and uh, we like to have people keep in mind that for outdoor sports, uh, we do allow the usage of the gyms, uh, but really for physical conditioning only. No outdoor balls can be hit, thrown, kicked, or used in the gym. And then we've already mentioned it, but we do wanna put an extra emphasis on it. Uh, no tape can be used on the gym flooring. Uh, this damages the seal and the paint. Other prohibited activities are, are listed here and listed on our website, but I do wanna hit on a couple. Um, we do not allow any animals uh, on the uh, premises except for service animals. Um, a number of uh, organizations uh, have gotten kind of used to or normalized um, color or splatter runs, uh, and those unfortunately are prohibited. Uh, and then we have uh, come across cases of individuals gambling on site, and that is definitely a prohibited activity. Next slide. Um, we're aware that a number of organizations uh, will uh, serve food, uh, and so we want to talk a little bit about use of concession stands or and or food vendors. Um, at most of our schools, concession or vending must be operated by the host school support organization, whether it be your PTA or your booster club, or 15% uh, of any monies collected must be submitted to the host school. Uh, and we do ask that you uh, seek permission for either if you are going to uh, serve food and collect money for that. Uh, prior approval and a signed FCPS concessions agreement must be completed and signed. Um, if you have food trucks, uh, these food trucks must be rolling go to service uh, field events with a valid uh, Fairfax County vending license. Uh, we do uh, food trucks cannot set up tables and chairs unless they have an approved schedule that has been processed with uh, FCPS community use. Uh, we do not allow any grills or open flame cooking without prior permission from FCPS community use. Next slide. Team pictures. Uh, league pictures incur rental fees, whether uh, whether the pictures are taken inside a school building or on or outside on the field. Uh, we do ask that you submit an online request through community use, uh, our online scheduling program, at least 15 business days, three weeks prior to the event date. Next slide. Uh, continuing on with uh, community uh, team pictures, uh, we have a number of options uh, 
the first option is going to be outside only uh, with no option to move inside the facility due to weather. Uh, option B is going to be outside planned usage with the opportunity to move into a facility due to weather. And option C is going to be uh, solely inside uh, the facility, and that's going to be planned out. Now, one of the things that we uh, want to make sure folks are aware is that uh, makeup weather dates cannot be pre-scheduled. Next slide. Uh, and then on, on this page, one of the things we just want to highlight is that payment bus must be received by the community use section at least 10 business days uh, prior to the event. Uh, also, uh, I do want to mention at the very bottom, you'll see, uh, and this does come into to play for a number of teams, cleats are not permitted inside our buildings. Uh, please make sure uh, those uh, participants have a, a change of shoes uh, if they are going to come in uh, from the fields. Uh, league tournaments, uh, as you've already heard, NCS schedules user groups for an end of the season league tournament as part of their usual league schedule. Uh, NCS will schedule the FCPS space uh, for that end of season tournament. Uh, no additional fees are usually collected from the participants beyond their league fees, nor any admission fees. We highlight that because we go to the next page and uh, we talk about other sports tournaments. All tournaments that are not an end of season uh, event must schedule their tournament with FCPS community use, not NCS, when either of the following occur. Uh, the participants or teams are charged a fee to join the tournament, or there are entrance or gate fees that are charged for spectators. In, in these cases, uh, FCPS community use fees will be assessed for the tournament, and those fees will include rental, staff fees, and other special fees per our regulation 8420, as well as our notice 8420. Uh, and we want to make sure we emphasize that third-party transfer of NCS scheduled usage from NCS users is not allowed. Next page. Uh, what to do if uh, the first two items on this page, we've already talked about what happens if your gym is not open at the scheduled time uh, after waiting a couple of minutes, call NCS for assistance, or if a group is on your space or in your space uh, and you've uh, alerted them after alerting them, uh, call NCS for assistance. Uh, I want to go to the third item. Uh, if you see someone or something suspicious in the parking lot or around the fields, uh, please call uh, Fairfax County uh, Police Department or dial 911 if something is seriously uh, wrong uh, and so that they can respond. Uh, if Let's look at number four. If uh, our group is playing a soccer game and there are spectators drinking alcohol and watching the game, what do we do? Uh, these individuals are not part of our group. Um, uh, the groups using FCPS's fields are ultimately responsible for the rules and processes surrounding their usage. Uh, as permitted users, an obligation to observe and report uh, prohibited actions is expected. Uh, if it were not for your event, the spectators would not be there watching, possibly. Uh, please call Fairfax County uh, Police Department or dial 911, as well as contact NCS to report the prohibited activity when it's first observed. Uh, lastly, um, the last example uh, says, I'm not going to use my time allotted in my permit. My friend is looking for a place to work on their sports skills. Can I give my permitted time to someone else? The answer to that is no. Uh, permits are issued specific uh, to specific individuals or groups and cannot be given away to another person or group. All usage must be used by the permitted group or person only or return to NCS. Of course, you can contact NCS to give back any time that your group will not use. Next slide. And this is going to be our last slide. Of course, I've mentioned a number of numbers. Here is a list of numbers that you can reference uh, for your use. Uh, so thank you. And now I will turn it back over to Vicki Garner. Thank you, John. I appreciate it, Brown. I just want to have a couple final uh, remarks. Thank you for adding to Fairfax County communities and to the residents. It's the users like your the sports groups that are on here that really add to our community right. use. Together, we can stay safe and enjoy the resources available to all Fairfax County citizens. So that's the end of our FCPS presentation. I'm going to turn it over to our friends at the Park Authority and Dan.
Dan, it's all yours. Actually, this is Kevin Williams. I'm uh, going first, and I'll introduce Dan in a moment. Uh, and Kevin Williams with the Park Authority. Also, Taylor Dixon is here with us this evening, and he is uh, responsible for school field maintenance program that the Park Authority is in charge of. So this is not inclusive of all maintenance. This is uh, very specific uh, to the maintenance of the surface, playing surface of the fields, that's the grass, the infield dirt, irrigation, et cetera. Uh, so a couple of slides here, just outlining what we do. So we have two or several different programs, but the first program is really geared towards the elementary and middle schools, as well as the center admin centers that have fields. You can see our inventory there of 344 rectangles and diamonds and eight synthetic fields on these particular sites. Uh, we handle the weekly mowing during the mowing season, April to November. We handle some basic turf management, uh, seeding and aeration. Uh, on the diamond fields, we do a lot of the uh, infield renovations. You can see in the pictures there, we did a little heavier duty renovation. This was a Holmes Middle School project on the 90 foot baseball field. Uh, that's a little more aggressive than we typically do, but uh, basically we handle the infield renovations to grade and add mix as needed. Uh, so there's a safe playing surface. And then of course we're grooming them weekly uh, throughout the playing season. Uh, there are several irrigation systems throughout the county that uh, we're responsible for maintenance and programming on. And of course the synthetic turf maintenance on those eight fields that I mentioned. Next slide, please. Uh, the other programs that we run are on the high schools. And these are different uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, it's obviously a, sh a smaller inventory. We have 53 grass diamonds and then 44 synthetic fields. Those are the stadium and practice synthetic fields on the high school sites. Uh, for mowing, it's a little bit different. We pick up mowing in June and we run that through the end of the season in November. And the high school sites are responsible for their mowing of the sites from now or when spring starts into the June timeframe when we pick up for summer season. Uh, we do uh, both natural and synthetic turf maintenance programs. Uh, it's inclusive of you know, fertilizers and grooming of synthetic fields, et cetera. And on the diamonds, again, we're, we're doing the infield grooming and the infield renovation. Again, that's uh, picks up in June as well, similar to the mowing aspect. We start grooming in June, run through November. And then we're renovating the fields after the fall season to turn the fields back over to high school sports for their spring seasons uh, later in the fall. Now, there's quite a few things that we don't do. Uh, John had mentioned a lot of the uh, you know, maintenance aspects or what if it's broken, where to go to fix it uh, in his slides. So we don't handle anything that is Bermuda grass. So if a high school site has converted a field from what is traditionally a fescue or a ryegrass into a more expensive and heavier maintenance Bermuda grass. We don't take care of that. That's the school site directly. Uh, we're not in charge of any of the irrigation. So if you have a overly wet field or an irrigation head spewing water up, it's nothing the park authority has any control over. So you'll need to talk to the site and the community use office at schools. And then of course the grass rectangles that any of them that are left out there on high school property is not part of our school field maintenance program. Uh, other things that's not listed here, you know, if there's a damaged fence, if there's a light not working, uh, any of those sorts of things that are not related to the playing surface, then that's not something the park authority is in charge of. It's strictly uh, creating and maintaining a playing surface that's safe for your use. And that's it for the school slides. I will introduce Dan Sutherland. He's the branch manager for the Park Authority for our park management branch. Dan. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Vicki. Uh, yeah, just to uh, talk about uh, the Park Authority uh, athletic fields and uh, some of your contacts. And you may recognize some of these names, but uh, we are broken down into uh, six region, uh, excuse me, six areas that maintain uh, approximately about 60 parks in each area. And uh, each of those areas have a different, uh, very number of fields, as you would see by the uh, numbers of parks that each one of these areas have. Uh, we also have the three areas uh, broken down into regions, an east and a west region. 
Uh, the contacts for the East and the West region um, are Jeff Winkle for the East region and uh, Mark uh, Plord for the West region. Uh, our three areas under uh, Jeff are areas uh, two, uh, three, and four, and then one, five, and six are under Mark. Uh, next slide, please. And here you will see the contact information and the management staff uh, for uh, areas four, five, and six as well, and the parks that they manage and maintain. Uh, so also want to uh, mention our adoptive field volunteer program for our athletic fields. Uh, we have uh, two aspects of that program, the full adoption aspect, as well as the partial adoption. Full adoption <clears throat> is where you take over, excuse me, all of the uh, maintenance responsibilities on an athletic field, and you get certain benefits that go along with that, including out-of-season use, fee exemptions, storage buildings for your maintenance equipment, as well as sponsorship banners. Uh, we currently have about 71 athletic fields, most of them diamonds, but a good portion are uh, rectangle fields as well. And then for our partially adopted fields, where we have about 38 uh, that program is set up for anybody that does not want to take on the full adoption uh, requirements, but they just want to supplement what our staff does on the diamond fields. Uh, we welcome anybody that wants to, you know, possibly rake or drag on the days that we do not. And so that's what the partial adoption program is set up for. Um, and so anybody, as long as you have permitted time, are welcome to become a partial adopter. Uh, for full adopters, you would need to be a primary user or permitted user, primary permitted user of that field in order to be considered uh, as eligible for the full adoption of a field. Next slide, please. Uh, we also have a, a very good partnership program that a lot of athletic field organizations have taken advantage of. That is the Massenbrook Volunteer Matching Fund Grant Program. Uh, as you will see there, you, we've had the program for approximately 24 years, and uh, we have distributed uh, over $2 million in grant funding uh, with uh, a couple hundred projects, uh, as well as, uh, well, excuse me, <clears throat> a couple hundred projects, and the total value of all of those projects adds up to over to $15 million. Now, there's a mixture of uh, multiple types of park projects. It's not just athletic field related, uh, but as you see there, 80 of those 206 projects have been athletic field related. Uh, so quite a significant number uh, that, uh, and, and quite a lot of that value is attributed to the athletic fields as well. But you can see any number of the uh, types of projects and improvements that were completed on the fields. It could be anything as basic as something like uh, fencing. Uh, a field may not have outfield fencing and you want to, ex and want to explore putting that in or something a little more uh, higher dollar and value with, such as a synthetic field, uh, but and anything in between as you see there. Uh, the maximum amount of the grant funding is $20,000 and that uh, is only achieved if the grant itself is $40,000 or more. The total project cost, I should say, is $40,000 or more. So it's a matching grant up to 50% of the value of the project. Um, you can also uh, apply for the grant in the form of cash as for your match, but also in kind services. So if your project somehow had some volunteer labor uh, that we could attribute a value to, and that volunteer labor was attributu attributable to the, the actual project improvement that was being accomplished, there might be an opportunity there to uh, partnership on the in-kind services angle as well as the cash match angle. Um, now, individuals or organizations may apply for multiple projects in a year. However, they are limited by the total matching amount that you can receive in a year of up to $20,000. Uh, that may not be uh, a large enough amount for you to do many projects, especially on athletic field. If you're doing more, uh, like a synthetic field or something expensive like lights or irrigation, but you may find that with a lot of fencing projects, you might be able to achieve uh, a couple different projects uh, on a couple different fields uh, with that amount. 
Uh, for more information, uh, you can always email me and ask me any questions, but you can also go to the link that's provided there. Next slide, please. Uh, so just some lighting reminders, as was mentioned earlier, uh, the Park Authority does managing, manage the scheduling of our lights through Musco Control Link. Uh, and what we do is typically we'll schedule the lights uh, based upon what is permitted for the field, as well as what information we may receive from user groups. In other words, if you're a user group and you've been permitted the field seven days a week, however, you're aware ahead of time that you only use the field six nights a week or in, till, instead of till 11 o'clock your permitted time, you're done by 1030. Uh, we would greatly appreciate uh, the ability to save some energy um, and not have somebody uh, inappropriately turn on the lights and just let them sit there or uh, you know, just somebody messing around with them. So anytime that you do have uh, lighting variations that are different than your permit, feel free to let us know, or if you, at the last second, you uh, close your fields uh, or, or decide not to hold a practice or something, please let your individual area manager know. Um, some other things to, to note about our fields is all of our fields operate with push buttons on and off. So if it's approaching the start of your term, permit time, uh, and the lights haven't come on, don't expect them to just automatically come on. You will have to activate them with an on button. Uh, the reason I want to point out the off button is that, again, in the interest of saving energy um, and also uh, helping out our neighbors, uh, please turn off the lights if you do not have any permitted group waiting to use the field um, and you're done for the evening. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is when we schedule our lights to come on, it is one hour that before sunset that we will allow the lights to come on on a field. So if uh, sunset, which, by the way, is the exact same time every year on every day, so it's real easy, something to look up on the Internet. Um, if it's at 630, the lights will be available to you at 530. Uh, so please note that as well. Um, a couple other uh, requests we have for conserving energy is uh, not turning on any fields that you are not using or permitted for, uh, especially uh, we have problems with uh, folks turning on lights and then nobody being on the field. And so that's obviously uh, a bother for some neighbors, but also a waste of the energy. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, notifying staff anytime you have permitted time that you are not going to utilize that we can take off the lights from the scheduling of the system. Uh, so for concerns and issues, uh, as I mentioned, please contact your appropriate area maintenance office, uh, but you also may contact the park operations maintenance line, which the phone number is listed there. We also have a, a mailbox that you can contact. Um, and then for any lighting concerns that are after hours, I believe you saw this number earlier as mentioned by NCS, but that is the NCS after hours phone number that you can call. Next slide. Uh, lastly, I just want to make you all aware that uh, you may gradually start to see some of these blue cans park up, uh, um, excuse me, uh, pop up in your parks. Uh, we are uh, installing these cans at fields, playgrounds, uh, any of our outdoor facilities. Uh, they are not going in all at once, but you will see them pop up here and there. So one thing we would ask, and as we ask for trash, not only recycling, um, is that you please pick up all of your ground trash and ground recycling and dispose of it in the cans. Uh, one, to help the appearance of the park, but two, the environment, and also help staff be able to focus more time on actual maintenance instead of actually picking up uh, uh, clutter that may be in the park like that. Uh, but please be aware of the program. We appreciate everybody's participants in it. Um, and that is all we had. So if you have any questions, just please let any of us know, any of the people that I mentioned earlier. Thank you. Well, you can, um, I'm going to jump back on here and you can see that uh, if you have any questions for NCS, there is our email um, and our 
um, number, our main box, Park Authority has their email address and Fairfax County has their email address also. Um, uh, we know we kind of threw a lot of information at you, but like we said, there will be um, this PowerPoint presentation along with the actual meeting itself will be online uh, very quickly. Um, so uh, we can take some questions. I know some people are typing some questions in, which is great. And then we've been able to answer those, I think, as we were going through. Um, so that's, uh, you know, so anything you have, um, any questions that you have, please answer. We see some comments here. If we don't answer them, we will certainly get back to, um, um, we will certainly get back to people. One of the questions here is from enforcement of people giving up unused gem space. Um, it's, uh, it's very difficult. We do want people to um, give up their space. Uh, we have groups that don't show up and we are we we know if, if if we if you know of groups that aren't showing up, let us know, please, and we will try to get our monitors out there. So um, we'll do our best uh, we can to do that, but we do understand the concern about um, unused gem space. How about other questions that we have? Um, I don't know, Iran or Jason, do you guys see any uh, that have come across? I don't want to keep people here longer. Um, again, please don't be afraid to reach out to any one of our groups. If there's questions for your particular, um, for NCS, please reach out to your schedulers, to, to myself, to anybody, Park Authority, and to uh, the school system. Um, got a couple other questions, I think, that are in here. Um, yeah, Mark, um, there are about 10 answered questions in the Q&A section. They've been answered by our presenters. Um, we can either read a couple of those out loud or um, have them sent out with the link to the PowerPoint and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, we can certainly um, read them um, out loud. I think there's uh, uh, one here. I, I know, I see uh, somebody, Travis has their hand up. I'm gonna read uh, the question here. Um, it says, why can't the um, user have access to the fields and gem schedule they are permitted to you. There shall be a website where we can log in or even open to the public to see the full schedule of any particular field. We've had that question a number of times. Uh, right now, we just don't have the capability to do that. I know that's not a great answer. Um, I will certainly bring that answer up um, to uh, our supervisors and, and do that. But as of right now, we just don't have the ability to show that to, to everybody. And Travis, I believe, I don't know if, uh, Julie, I don't know how we do that, if they're going to answer or ask a question there. Um, actually, there is, I can read out the question that Travis okay. Coleman asked in the meeting chat. It said, okay. South County Athletic Association Rec Basketball has a lot of interest from the community in having basketball activities this spring. May someone please help us to know any gym space we may okay. use for this spring. Yeah, just reach out to your schedule, Travis, which will be uh, Victor Morales, um, and his information is on here. Just uh, um, reach out to him, and um, he will be able to work with you to get that information. Um, looks like there's one um, for parks. Uh, Dan, uh, could the parks facilities have posts at field park entrances with group users scheduled to use the season to free the hassle of dealing with uncooperative groups? I'm not sure I understand that question. Unless they're talking about have people there. Uh, yeah, as long as the field is not closed due to inclement weather, weather or closed for the season, uh, it is open for general public use as long as that use does not conflict with any permitted user or, um, again, walk on users that exceed uh, the rule of 20. Um, I, if it, that does not answer your question, feel free to please email me or ask the question, uh, uh, clarify what you are actually looking for.
Mark, please unmute. All right, I'm unmuted now, I apologize. Um, I saw there was a question about the rule of 20, which is basically uh, if there are less than 20 people and there's no one that has a permit for that field, then that group of individuals would be allowed to use that field um, as long as there's nobody that is permitted there. If there was a permitted group that's there, then walk-ons are not permitted. Uh, we do not we do not schedule pickle well um, pickleball at this point. There's not a pickleball program um, to to apply to. All right. Sorry, I feel like I'm kind of jumping around, so I apologize if I'm not getting to all your questions. Um, Anybody else? Uh, I see, we see some questions that are coming in. If, and again, if we don't get to them, um, we will try to um, um, we will try to answer them through emails or we'll ask you to reach directly out to us. Um, let's see. Let's see. Anything else? Uh, got a lot of questions here that are coming up. Mm -hmm. We have occasionally had issues with sports bleeding over, over and onto our fields. We wanted to know if there was a place to know how much of a shared field was allocated to each sport. Um, we usually, uh, that's usually done within the um, organization. If you're a, a user group, maybe you're an adult user group and you have a field, then you get the entire field. Uh, if you're a um, user, if you're a youth group and you're scheduled a field, a rectangle field, then you may split that up amongst a number of different teams. Um, but if you're given a, a field, then that field is yours to be used. Again, if you have any questions specifically, reach out to us specifically about a field and we can help you with that. Um, uh, regular season usage basically means, um, this is Teddy asked about, kindly expand on regular season. That is the normal season. Like if a um, soccer season is, is in the fall, then the regular soccer groups at house leagues and normal play will take place, practices and things like that, house games, tournament games on weekends they take precedence over an outside tournament. Anything else? All right, um, looks any, uh, Julie, do you see any other ones that you think, or um, I don't know, Jason or Ron, anything you think that we see? Um, we have 13 answered questions and 10 open questions that we haven't gotten to answer yet, uh, but we will, let me see. Did we are, did somebody already address the question regarding the adopted gym, <laughs> adopt a field program if it's available for gyms? Um, um, and the I, answer I'm, is no. Yeah, that's, uh, that, uh, that would be an FCPS question. And I, I think they, uh, yeah, if you've already answered that. Um, some of the lights are out at Sully Highland Park near the gate. They, that that's a comment to Dan. That's just for you, maybe to address. Maybe you can shoot, um, um, check on that. Um, what else we have, Julie? Want to make sure we try to get as many as we can answered. Okay. Just another reminder that if you have issues with um, grass or um, on the elementary or middle school fields to so make sure to contact um, Taylor Dixon. Uh, mm -hmm. Trash is handled by the school custodial staff. So reach out to the schools directly for that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna interject on that. Uh, do, okay. Please do not reach out to the schools directly, contact NCS and they will contact us and we right. will contact the schools. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Never the line of communication. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, What's the best way to know if fields are unavailable due to school renovations? Those would be our um, um, our uh, schedule.
schedulers will know that FCPS will give us a list of what schools are out during renovation and they the actual schools FCPS will actually block those schools out in the system and we would not be able to schedule them. Um, so that's how you would know. And if you have any questions, particularly about any um, school, please ask us and we can look in the system and, and would know for that. Um, could locks be installed at the light box as we have experienced groups without permits mess with lights after us asking them to leave? Um, yeah, the problem with that is then you have keys that are out um, and we, we've tried that some with lock boxes. We've done that a little bit at schools and we will continue to do that. If you have a particular one school or a light issue, um, David, uh, please uh, contact your schedule directly and we can look into that. Problem is with that, then the locks get broken and people that that's the that's a little bit of what happens with those, but I understand your concern. Okay. Anything else that you guys can see there? You got open questions. Um, there's a question that says, How is there and has there been any discussion about extending the summer season for field use? We are in charge as much as as much for six weeks in the summer as we pay for three plus months in the spring. And Laurie answered the question by saying, you are charged a one-time fee per person and not by the dates used. Oh, that's yeah. Lori. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's correct. And, and there has been some discussion about that and there probably will be some continued discussion about um, the different seasons that we have. Thank you, Lori, for answering that. How do we know if lights are repaired? For example, Alabama Drive Park. Dan, would that be you guys that would, would have to look into that? Correct, I can make a note and uh, check on it um, and uh, pass it on staff. Thank but you. also just notify uh, that list, just notify your individual area manager if you have a concern about the lights or our park maintenance line, that, that would also be a way to make us aware. Thank you. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. All right, I think we're going to go on for maybe another uh, three or four more minutes and then whatever questions that um, Julie, whatever ones you think we have not answered yet, you can send them to me, I guess, and then we can disperse disperse them and hopefully get them answered. Do you think that works? Yes, that would be a good idea. Okay, we're, we're, uh, as you can see, this is a work in progress for us. It's the first time we've done, we've had, we had over 200 people in this meeting to begin with. So this is a big undertaking for us. And we really appreciate your all's patience and questions. And hopefully we're getting the answers at you for your questions. And if not, please, again, uh, if you didn't feel like you got the right answer or we missed your question and we didn't answer it, reach out to us directly um, and we will uh, try to get an answer for you. Anything else you guys see that um, no. I'm going to go ahead and put the website for athletics into the chat so everybody can see that um, the field allocation policy. Okay. and the gym allocation policy. Yeah, if I might, um, I just want to take this opportunity from FCPS to thank Mark and all your effort and your team for putting this together. I think it's been very informative and a success. So, and also to our Park Authority friends, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, this was, um, I think this was a good thing. We, um, for those of you that have been around for a while, this, this was something that was done um, in person, uh, but we were having, we had a hard time obviously with COVID trying to get this back together. And we seem to be able to have um, um, more people be able to attend a meeting like this. And we do trying to get everybody together in a location. Um, so I hope this was uh, beneficial for everybody. Um, hope the information was useful. If we didn't touch on something um, in any one of the um, uh, services, whether it's school or NCS or Park Authority, please reach out to us directly um, and, and we will certainly try to answer questions that you have. Um, any, um, any other questions? It looks like we're, uh, I think we're gonna probably try to end this for the evening. 
Uh, we'll get those questions answered. And again, I do encourage you the um, um, I do encourage you to go back to Stephen McLaughlin, Champions of Character, to please go back to your groups to get some nominations in. And I also encourage you to reach out to us. I think I've probably said it 10 times now, so I apologize. Reach out to us if you have any questions that we weren't able to answer. So thank you guys very much. We hope you have a great evening. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, good luck this spring. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night at all. Julie, you still on or? I'm still here. Okay, I'm, I'll, I'll stay on you for um, um, for a few minutes, I guess. Just